Thousands of years ago, our ancestors called them the Ancients. They're a pantheon of gods in the eyes of our ancestors and the saviors of our world. We know today that they weren't gods, but they are no less our saviors. Our planet developed sentient life at seemingly the worst possible time. Our sun was nearing transition into a red giant, and things took a turn for the worst at almost exactly the point where we could vaguely understand the implications of that change. Our astronomers of old, naive children playing with toys telescopes, compared to those even only a hundred years later, noticed that over the course of the past hundred years, the sun appeared to have grown bigger. This was not initially cause for concern, but the gradual changes across the planet soon sent our people into a panic. The summers gradually grew hotter, winter became increasingly mild, and those were just the things they could feel. They couldn't have possibly understood the ways their atmosphere was being affected, but perhaps that was a mercy. They didn't need yet another avenue for the fear and hopelessness to creep into their hearts. Prophets proclaimed this a divine punishment, they demanded repentance. Others called it a doomsday and felt nothing would stop it, so they became the worst version of themselves. Since the end was coming, why should they care about anything other than their own desires and wants? Our world fell into the chaos of violent nihilism and zealous religious worship, the two major factions clashing with each other over and over, laying waste to virtually everything in their paths and not caring who was caught in their crossfire. This went on for years as the planet's state deteriorated and gradually the hopes of the common man that this would all somehow pass were completely dashed. Until the 87 nights of the Ancients Dance. No other event in the entire history of our planet has been recorded in such precise detail as this, and for good reason. No one knows when it started, but soon it was impossible not to notice. The stars had come alive. They flew and darted around in the night sky, thousands upon thousands of bright lights moving in sync, responding to each other's movements, like a beautiful dance in the heavens. But they didn't fade out when night turned to day. They were still there moving about, unceasingly, and our people were spellbound, unable to take their eyes off this inexplicable event. The zealots and nihilists even stopped fighting to watch, wanting to somehow use this phenomenon to their size advantage, but their lack of understanding made their words sound hollow, even to their own followers. So silence fell. For 87 straight nights, our world watched these dancers and waited. They didn't know what they were waiting for, but they knew this had to have a purpose. This had to mean something. They clung desperately to what they didn't understand, because the things they did told them that they were fated to perish. On the last night of the dance, a date that is still celebrated to this day, the dancers halted. For hours, our world held their collective breath, their hearts crying out for the dancers to move again, or at least not to fade away. They couldn't bear for this last hope to be ripped away from them. They would not be able to withstand their despair. A move they did, but this time it was no dance. This was a march. The dancers no longer weaved around each other, but shot off in straight lines to form a single file line that encircled the entirety of the planet. Those single points of light merged into a solid unbroken ring, and gradually the glow that ring gave off began to grow in intensity, to the point that it almost hurt to look at. Only the lucky ones who lived along our planet's equator were able to see most of the ring's journey as it began to shift, rising up past the North Pole before moving much more rapidly back down, not stopping until it had completely passed over the Southern Pole. So fixated were our people on the movement of the ring, that only when it passed out of their views did they notice the change in our sun. The astronomers noticed first, and when they finished their tests and experiments, they were the ones who announced through eyes blurred with tears that our world had been saved. But while it looked like the sun had been returned to normal, the truth was even more incredible. The stars in the sky were wrong. They matched none of the previously recorded patterns. The few planets close enough to ours to be observed through our early telescopes were gone, and there were new ones in places where only starry space could be observed. The dancers hadn't fixed the sun. They had moved our planet. While the world reeled from this announcement, those on the southern end of the world saw the ring break up, and the dancers that made up its pieces fly off away, their work done. But several stayed behind and travelled back across our skies. They hovered over the various capitals of our world's nations, and each shot down a blindly bright beam of light that lasted only a few moments. By the time the light faded, the dancers were truly all gone, and at the places touched by their light were pillars carved out of a strange, foreign metal that no tool for the next thousand years would be able to scratch. On the surface of these pillars were etched words, written in every known language of the regions they appeared in. We did not want to interfere, 
but we could not watch our world perish when we had the means to save it. You will not see us again for a very long time, and we know that memory is fickle, so we have left these as a reminder, and a comfort. You are not alone. We are here, watching and waiting for the day that you will join us among the stars. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors called them the Ancients. Today we call them humans, and we call each other friend. <laughs>